You know, we hear a lot of marketing BS. We hear a lot of marketing excuses. We hear a lot of marketing myths. And so Claudia today, Claudia and I today are talking about two myths that we know really hold people back and actually make marketing harder for them. So what we're talking about today are the myth of number one, that marketing strategy is hard. So let's start there. And then number two, I know that I wrote them down, but I can't remember number two right now. Ah, that the broader I focus, uh, the better the it is, the more, people, the more people, people I will come in. Like, yes, I want to, I want to hit more people by that way. Okay. So I'm let's talk about this. Enough. Okay. And we're just saying real focus today on these two marketing strategies. If you have any questions about what feels hard for marketing for you, you can always drop them in the, in the link. So let's start with this one. Marketing strategy is hard. We actually covered this in a previous episode where we talked about what marketing strategy is, but let's like break it down. What is actually hard about marketing strategy? Well, the thing is, people tend to think that marketing strategy is only for large companies with big budgets, right? So we tend to focus on tactics. Uh, and, and then we think marketing strategy is complicated. And essentially, I think marketing strategy is the easiest step in your marketing because mm -hmm. it's the answer to what do you want your marketing efforts to do for you? Mm -hmm. And that's so, basically what the the – that's – when people are saying, I need a marketing strategy, that's the question that they really need to answer. What yes. do they want their marketing to do for them? What do you want your marketing to do for you or for your business? Because remember, marketing strategy is in alignment with your business goals, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the easy question is asking, what do you want your marketing strategy to do for you? And then for me, the more complicated or the more tricky is the tactics or the marketing plan, because that is really the answer, okay, if my marketing has to help me create awareness, brand awareness, or authority, or or selling, how am I going to do that? And that is the marketing plan or the tactics. And the thing with tactics is that you have to be consistent and you have to be uh, being there for the long term. Yes. So I think marketing strategy doesn't need to be anything complicated. You know, it can be as simple as visibility or <clears throat> brand awareness, but ideally linked to a measurable uh, goal, like more visibility in a measurable way. On LinkedIn, I want more subscribers, or I want more followers, or I want so many interactions, or I want so many conversations, because actually in the end, it's about the connection, right? So make, make a marketing strategy that is, that is measurable. And realistic and I think that is the easiest part and then the, the, the plan can be as complicated or as exotic as you want it obviously the simplest the better but you know tell me what your marketing strategy is for example so you, what's what are the goals that your marketing strategy is pushing you toward well my my marketing strategy is really very much uh, resting on the fact that I connect one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. So I know that the, the conversions for me in the moment where I can talk about my philosophy about marketing are conversations one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So what I create around are the opportunities to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. so for instance, uh, I love my conversations with you. Mm -hmm. and I enjoy them tremendously. Even if we didn't have them broadcasted, mm -hmm. uh, I would enjoy very much the conversations because uh, it spearheads the creativity in me. But because we broadcast them, it's also a way to connect with people. Um, then when I have my one-on-one -on -one conversations, I can focus completely on the person and come up with, with good ideas. So my marketing strategy is geared to conversions, actually. Mm -hmm. right? So, But I know my conversions are one-on-one. -on -one, so that means slowlier growth of my business but more solid because when I connect with people, I really create a very solid relationship. So I have usually repeated business from my clients. Yeah, and you are intuition kicks in a lot when you're doing your one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah, I think you were a witness recently. <laughs> yes. So that's your strategy. And that now that, that that's not hard, right? Like now that's not hard now that you know it's your strengths and it's where you shine. And then so but what you're saying is the strategy isn't hard. That's a myth. But what's hard is the tactics because you have to be consistent and you have to show up in the right places that feel good to you and where your audience is. So uh -huh. what are your 
tactics then let's talk about. So if your goal is to get a one to, that's the ultimate goal, get a one, yes. get on a one-on-one -on -one call. Okay. So what are your tactics? So that is my ultimate goal is conversion. And usually that happens in my one-on-one -on -one call. So mm -hmm. uh, what happens is I am present in many places or in several places uh, where I can create relationship with people. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but I create this relationship spontaneously. It's not that I join memberships, for instance, to, to catch clients. That's not the goal. Mm -hmm. I join memberships because they address a need I have, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, with you, you help me with my content. But it happens so that in these memberships, I have the opportunity of helping other people. Mm -hmm. When they ask questions and then they see how I work and many times they say, uh, can you help me with this? And then I have 20 minute conversations focus on one specific problem you want to solve and usually we solve the problem and there are people ask me what can i do what is my next step mm -hmm. how can you help me mm -hmm. so some of the tactics will deliver results some will not some memberships are good for me but not good for my business as, mm -hmm. as leads but mm -hmm. are good for me so you have to be very careful and very picky where are you going to put your strengths <clears throat> because my risk is I tend to be very generous with my knowledge and I tend to solve more problems than, than it's wise to solve in that moment, right? Um, and that tends to overwhelm people. So mm -hmm. my, my lesson was, besides hurting my business, right? But uh, my lesson was to know, okay, this is enough knowledge, information for you to manage at this point. With this, you can go move a step forward. Yeah, we talk about that. We talk about that a lot. Where sometimes you're hurting somebody by giving them too much information yes. because they can't swallow it all. So the this is I love this differentiation that um, you have to choose the tactics that feel good to you. And I love that you are so um, clear on some of the tactics don't always work, but they do require you to show up. So you want to show up in places that feel really good for you and that yes. don't deplete your energy. Yes, definitely. Because I am not a mass person. It, it right. overwhelms me. Right. So, for instance, networking, which for me is a very good strategy. Um, <clears throat> I avoid large events because uh, I go and come back with the same amount of connections or mm -hmm. less. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I, people saw my face, I saw their faces, but uh, I'm not, I don't function well in those situations. But in networking where this, the group is smaller or um, one on ones, then then I am more at ease and then I can really help people because it actually starts with helping people. And then this is true for every marketer, every entrepreneur. We all want to help people and solve a problem, but we all have these different end goals for our business, the strategies that will get us there and the tactics, which are the little teeny tiny, almost like steps. cut steps. Yes, that get you steps. get you there. So. If for people watching, I really want them to think like marketing strategy isn't hard. You just have to choose the right one and have it be aligned with your goals and then choose the tactics that actually create a return on that 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 choice that you made. So Yes, and that takes me to, to the other thing <clears throat> that uh, makes marketing strategy complicated yes. in the head of people is that we need to move on the rule of wants. So about that. one person, one target we are going to help one specific target, one specific problem, and one concrete offer. Yes, yes, yes. You know, especially when you're starting, especially when your resources are limited, uh, especially when you're growing your business, uh, mm -hmm. you need to be very careful and choose the best fit customer for you because that makes everything so much easier. And the best fit customer is the people that don't ask discount on your on your programs it's the people that uh, don't ask you to change your program because they thought it was something different it's the people that be behave as ambassadors of your program mm -hmm. so you know they understand they do the work those are your best people and selling to the best people is the easiest thing to do if you compare ideal customers with those that are not ideal customers you will see where to focus your efforts Every month I teach a course for the local women's business center and it's always got women in it who are just starting out in business. Uh -huh. And 
they have a really hard time understanding this topic because, or this, this aspect, because, um, everybody at the beginning is a best fit customer to you because you don't have any money. You don't know what you're doing. You just want to help people and you've gone into business to help people and solve problems. And so I do a whole training in that class about choosing the right clients, choosing the right audience to speak to and attracting the right clients. And what I give a really specific example about like when you're trying to reach everybody and I talk about a specific client I used to have who um, was trained to teach teenagers and empower teenagers. Uh -huh. And so she wanted to help teens and tweens, which are actually two separate buckets of people, uh, teachers and administrators in schools. And so she was just, she just was so frustrated with herself because she couldn't get her marketing done, a website or anything or social media. But if you're trying to speak to these four different kinds of buckets of people, you know, no wonder you, there's no language in the world that will speak to both a teenager and an administrator of a school and a teacher and a parent, right? Like, so it was just so tiring for her and it kept her in this paralysis. Yeah. And so I always try to encourage the women in this group to, at the beginning of your journey, start thinking about getting laser focused in your lane, because the sooner that you choose this, get rid of this wide net mentality and you just get laser focused and you stay in your lane, the easier marketing actually is, but so many people don't buy into that. Yes, and you know, it's so lovely that you use that example because I think that what was confusing her is that she saw these four groups had most probably the same problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. The thing is that each group experiences the problem at a different level and in a different way. Um, so what most probably happened is that when she started her business, she had some affinity with this problem. She either lived it and knew how to solve it, yep. but... <clears throat> And of course, she being up here in the problem because she has this helicopter view, she thought, I can help all these people. But the thing is, even if it's the same problem, the different targets will um, experience in a different way and will have different goals to solve it. It's very true. So right? you really need, when you start a business, you the question that you need to ask is, what does people need? Mm -hmm. And the people you can help, what do they need? And create your product in function of that need. And not yes. say, I can solve this problem and I'm going to bring it to market. Because maybe you have a problem, you have idle capacity, and that problem is not addressing a need. So it, it's very important with question do you ask yourself when you're starting your business or when you're creating a new offer, you know, and, and then see who who really needs what what is the issue in the market what is the market missing you know and not creating from an idle capacity but creating from observation mm -hmm. what is going wrong in the market and ask questions ask 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 you know the the struggle for her specifically was for teens and tweens yes that you're right they all had a very similar problem but beyond the marketing even creating a website even, or social media, for example, how do you create an offer? So is it going to be like a workshop for teens and then a whole, a whole like three day um, immersion into a school district for an administrator? You know, like those are like 180 degrees apart. And, and how do you create this offer when you're, when you have this huge wide net that you're trying to serve? So I yeah. know, and you know, that people resist this so much because they want, well, they want to help more people. They want to make more money, but it's, it's, I, the ironic thing is the, the more specific and laser focused you can be, the more successful your business is. Let me put it in this image, uh, which is not precisely uh, kind, but will illustrate the point. Let's suppose you're out there hunting for um, uh, rabbits or how do you call it for hares, right? So if you start shooting at every hair, what you're going to do is scare the, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And they will all run away in different directions, which means you've lost your chances, you've lost your ammunition, and you've lost your prey. So you really need to, especially small entrepreneurs, we have limited resources, we have limited time, we need to be very careful. What you can do, however, is start with one and when you have your game 
rolling out the way you want it, then you can start considering a second target. This is especially so, for instance, for coaches. Coaches, uh, I have a client who is a, a coach and she's also a trainer. So she helps coaches with certifications, mm -hmm. but she also trains indivi uh, coaches individuals. So, but she has these two markets very differentiated. And when you get to her website, she her home is like a portal. You go here, yes. are you this? Then you go here, are you that? Then you go here. Yep. And you still have two messages, but you're delivering these two messages at different moments. Because and she's also been in the business. I know who you're talking about. She's been in the business for a very long time. She didn't yeah. enter the marketplace having these seven seven different offers. And I think yeah. that's a mistake that people think the more offers I have, the easier it will be to sell them. But no, that's just more to market and more people to market to. Well, you know, there are two things that confuse people, inconsistency and too many offers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, you experienced too many offers at some point recently where, you know, uh, people don't know even anymore what to look, for, reach out for me. And inconsistency ha has the same effect because if today you are apples and tomorrow you are pears and the day after you are pineapple, people won't know what what are you standing for. And, and that is why consistency in marketing is so pivotal. And that's why, then again, you have to make it easy to yourself by keeping to the rule of one. One yes, target, yes, yes. one problem, and one offer. I like it. One program, one target, one offer. Um, I just put your website in there because I know that when people can get on these 20 minute calls with you, you do this laser focused thing. You have great examples. Um, you're just able to see things. So I'm, I really want to suggest to people if they're struggling with their marketing strategy, and your tactics, and you don't know really who you want to be speaking to. Claudia, that is what she does. That is the exact thing that she helps people with. I am on the other side of it. So I work with those people once they've got all that figured out, and I help them create their content. But a lot of times they're just swimming in this pool, which has too, kind of too many people in it, and it's too yeah. noisy. And she really helps clear clear the road for that. So I highly suggest you get on a call with her. If you're already done with that and you want to help with content, that's, that's for me. But really, I, I've, I've sent so many of my clients to Claudia because she really does such foundational work with them and it's so helpful. Thank you. Really, take, take the chance, you know, you won't lose anything and you will discover, yeah. you will most probably remove. The thing is, we have a, ball, a yarn of problems and you need to know which is the first one you need to solve in order to solve the rest. You well, know? that's why you your whole thing, again, I look like a ghost today. Um, your whole thing is the unraveling, right? Like you yeah. have this big ball of yarn and you really know how to get in there and just pull the right thread that unravels the whole thing. And I, th I think it's kind of magical. That's not my strength. My strength is on the other side. So I love that we are collaborating in this way. And actually we have an offer now, a new offer, speaking of offers where you work with Claudia first and then you work with me and you walk away with your entire marketing strategy done uh, your roadmap mapped out and your all your content done for the next six to nine months. So it's pretty cool. I'm excited yeah, about that. Actually, I should because put the link that. for that. <laughs> I'll put the link for that in the uh, the thing. Um, I just want to say, as always, I love these chats because they're real and there's just like usually something that people can take away. So I always appreciate your your insights here. Thank you, my friend. And they are spontaneous, which is what <laughs> I <laughs> true. We don't plan them we, out. We only decide what are we going to talk about and then <laughs> things happen <laughs> well okay. which is another proof to my strategy i know yeah. i know you know the moment i write i become very conscious of a reward and i become very stiff yeah you're like oh, I am yeah. a exactly <laughs> <laughs> and the moment i you ask me a question it's like pressing a plate yes you, well you've got so much it comes very natural so that that was also for me uh, a search to find the best the best form of content for me and as yeah. part of my strategy so we have to keep on looking yes so if you are watching and you're watching on the replay just you can tag either one of us and tell us what your biggest frustration with marketing is or your biggest frustration with content we'd love to address your questions so we go back and look so make sure you put your comments below and we'll be here next week we decided to do mondays now so thanks Thank for sharing up. bye everybody bye